So to identify oversized and undersized VMs with inside your VR environment, the best thing to do is look at the CPU and memory utilization. VMware gives some information around what they specify to be the correct parameters to measure against, and it is CPU and memory utilization. For an undersized VMs, you would consistently look for values over 70%, that's both on CPU and memory. And for oversized VMs, again, consistently you're looking at values less than 30%, both the CPU and memory. The answer to this is mathematics. It's basically taking a look at your cluster capacity and especially if you look at CPU and memory, you have CPU and megahertz and you have memory and megabytes. Monitor your VM's usage, both at the memory level and at the CPU level, and then work out what your average, overall average value is for a virtual machine across your environment, and then divide that up into the remaining cluster capacity that you have to give you an indication of how many extra virtual machines you can fit with inside your cluster. SMP is actually uh, providing more than one virtual CPU to a virtual machine with inside your environment. Now there's a number of key drawbacks to using VSMP unless you actually need to. The first one is actually something called CPU overcommitment. And that is the way you, you overcommit the numbers of virtual CPUs to the numbers of physical CPUs on your host. Remember that a virtual machine has to run on an individual ESX host, regardless of how many hosts you have inside your cluster. What you don't want to do is overcommit the numbers of virtual CPUs if you have a high amount of CPU utilization on your host. It's because you have something called CPU ready time that can build up. This is in fact a CPU queue waiting for the numbers of virtual CPUs that have been assigned to your VM to have the same amount of physical CPUs available or free to you for the VM to then get on and do some CPU work. Now the other reason that VMware would say that you don't need to use VSMP is if you have single threaded workloads because they will make no attempt to use any of the additional v virtual CPUs that you've assigned to your virtual machine. Okay, so there's four key metrics that uh, I've identified that you should be monitoring in terms of memory. The first one at the VM level is the active memory. So this is the active amount of memory currently being used by your virtual machine. But also, another key metric is at the host level. Remember, your VMs will run on your host. So therefore, the amount of memory that's being used is something called host-consumed memory by the virtual machines. So that's another key metric. What you, what you should be able to see is that your active memory is always consistently lower than your host-consumed memory. This is because your host consumed memory is the amount of granted memory to your virtual machine uh, minus any shared memory that's being used and your active memory should always be lower. Okay, and the other memory metrics that you should be monitoring are any uh, reclamation metrics such as ballooning whereby the balloon driver gets inflated inside your virtual machine uh, to reclaim some memory because your ESX host is actually um, more memory is being demanded from it that it can actually satisfy. And also, further on from that, any swapping. Because as we know, in the IT world, in computing, swapping is bad, and therefore processes are being swapped out. So they're the four key memory metrics that you should be monitoring with inside your VMware environment. At the network level, there are two key metrics that we should be monitoring. They're called dropped TX and dropped RX. As it says, they are monitoring the numbers of dropped packets coming into your host and to your virtual machines. So it's both on the receive side and the transmit side. If you see any packets being dropped, it indicates that actually you may have an issue with the amount of processing going on to handle the numbers of packets coming into your environment. Therefore, you should also monitor CPU utilization to see if that's a bottleneck. On the storage side, there are four key metrics. Two of them are latency metrics, kernel, so if you see any uh, kernel values that are greater than 4 milliseconds, you should actually indicate that this is a uh, handling too much data than your storage system can support. And also device, 
if you see any values greater than 15 milliseconds, it indicates a slower rate. The other two metrics in storage are aborted disk commands. So again, if you see any aborted disk commands being reported, you should investigate your storage subsystem and also any bus resets as well. So they're the key metrics for storage and network. Yep, um, Metron are running a VMware Capacity Management Essentials course on the 20th of June in London. Um, myself will be presenting that course uh, in London, Victoria, so please join us if you can. Furthermore, uh, we also have these YouTube recording videos and white papers that are all available from, all the information is available from Metron's website. So visit www.metron-athene.com for all of the information required.